Welcome back everybody, so this is Mr. Steinbach and I am doing a video today to show you how to get going on your iPad in Fusion 360 with our first little project that we're doing. We are, as I stated in class, going to be making these personalized baby blocks. So, um, before we do any design work, I know I talked about this in class, but we need to kind of figure out how big these things are going to be. So obviously they look like squares, um, they have letters on them, so we know what the geometry looks like. But if we scroll down to this little Etsy page that I put on our Schoology page, these blocks look like they're about an inch and a half in the height, the width, and the depth. So they're 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5 blocks. How did I get to this page? Well, on our Schoology uh, class page, you can see what this assignment looks like gives us a little bit more details of what's required but in this video I want to show you guys how to set up fusion and how to start creating these uh, these components each block will be its own component and uh, start building on your own okay so the requirements of the project are on the page they need to be 1.5 inch cubes each cube should be created in the same file which I'm gonna do for you and then later on we're going to be stacking them, uh, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. This is just a help video in case you are confused and don't know how to start. So here we go. We need to first uh, get our mouse plugged into our, our iPad, which mine is, and I'm going to get into my portal, and I should already have, yes, should already have my session loaded. So it is resizing. So your screen should probably look like this. Um, if you want to hide all your projects and stuff, we can click on this closed data panel. So there's a couple things that we're going to focus on here as far as file management. So here's how we get going. Before we start this project, we need to have our file folders set up. So to do that, we need to make sure we are not in full screen mode. <clears throat> full screen mode has been causing us a little bit of problems and issues, so I'm not going to hit this button. I'm just going to continue to work uh, this way. I'm going to click on this waffle iron right here, and you can see my name in the top corner, and you see that it says all projects. So make sure that yours also says all projects. And now this is where it gets kind of confusing. You see all these different folders here. These are different uh, Fusion calls them projects, okay? Now, I've had you make a sample shapes project. Um, this time, what I'd like you to do is click on new project here. This is going to pop up, and we're going to type and name this baby block project, okay? And again, I'm doing this on my iPad so you can see that it works. <laughs> we're, it's supposed to work, but we're going to go through the same kind of difficulties together. So we know that it's a project file because it has this little weird triangle on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click. And you can see that this project opened and there's nothing in here yet, but that is OK. So now that we created like this project folder, we need to put something in it. So I'm going to close this. Right now I have a blank file open that says untitled up here. In order to kind of uh, get ourselves started, I'm going to save this file right away just so I don't forget to do it later. So to save anything on Fusion, you're going to go up to the top left corner on the save button, click it, and it's going to ask uh, you know where we want to save this thing. So I want to save it in my baby block project folder. I want it to be called Baby Blocks. Sorry, typing on my iPad uh, is very difficult for me. <laughs> and I am going to now, so here's, here's a little bit of an issue that sometimes occurs. There's a save button down here. I can't access it. I'm going to try and move this window around, but I still can't get there. So one of the ways that I found that we can, we can see this a little bit better is if uh, under we, if we go to the settings menu and we go to screen resolution, I want to work in 1280 by 720, I think. This could change. We'll see if this works here. This makes my screen a little bit smaller so I can bring it up and I can click on this save button. I know this is not ideal. Save. 
but that's kind of how we have to kind of how we have to work. So I, I'm going to keep working in that screen resolution 1280 by 720. Okay. So now we have the baby blocks file set up. It's saved. It says baby blocks version one, and we are good to go and start building. Now, before we make any solid shapes, I just want us to take a look over here. This is called our project browser. And right now you can see that there's not too many things there. There's this icon that says baby blocks, which is our file. And it's made up, the symbol right here is one little cube. Then there would normally be bodies and sketches down here, but we haven't made anything yet. So here's how I personally like to set things up. Fusion recognizes two main types of files. See if we can remember this. The first file is called a component. A component is a solid that would be put together with other components to make something. So for example, let's say that um, I wanted to make my, I'd make like a marker or a pen or something on Fusion. A pen is not a solid object. It's made up of different components. The cap of the pen would be part of a, or it would be one component. The body of the pen would be a component. Maybe the little, uh, little tube of ink inside would be a different component. All of those are their own pieces. Again, we call these components. Now in Fusion, if we want to put all of those components together to create an object, we call that object an assembly. So an assembly is a bunch of different components put together. Now, in Fusion, a component, remember it's an individual like piece or part, has this symbol, it's a little cube. When you start putting components together, you're gonna see this symbol, oops, sorry, this symbol right here is gonna change to three different cubes, and we call that an assembly file, okay? Now, because we're doing these baby blocks and we're gonna stack them together when we're done, we're technically gonna make an assembly file first, and then we're gonna build all the individual components within that assembly file. Each component in our baby blocks is gonna be our unique blocks with our unique letters on them. So here's what I mean. To get going, right now we just have a component file. It wants us to build one thing, but I don't wanna do this. I wanna make an assembly file. So what I'm gonna do is click over here on the assemble, and it says new component. So watch what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna click on new component. All I'm gonna do is name my component. So this will be the first letter of your name. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Steinbox. So I'm gonna do block S. I'm not gonna change any of these other settings. I'm just gonna click on okay. Now you notice, hopefully over here, things look a little bit different. We have our baby blocks uh, file that we made already. We didn't change this name. And look, the symbol next to it has a couple different cubes, three different cubes on there. So that means it's an assembly file now. So that means that there's gonna be multiple components in here. My block S now is its own component down here. So um, if I start building like a rectangle or a square right now, it's gonna be building this block S component. Okay, now, in order to kind of get going on this, I'm gonna make a whole nother component down here so that I have two components ready to go to start building, okay? So check this out. I'm not gonna click on this button. I'm not gonna do this right now. I am going to go up to the baby blocks assembly. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna click on new component with my left click mouse or button on my mouse. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to do block T, and hit OK. Notice I have a block S, and I have a block T. Now, here's something interesting. If I start building right now, how does it know whether I'm building my, my block T component or my block S component? Well, if you see this little like uh, circle with a dot in the center, that shows which component is currently active for building. So I could, if I wanted to, go up to my block S and click here and make my block S active. So anything I do now is gonna go into this component. If maybe after I'm done building both of these blocks, I wanna move them around, I would wanna activate my assembly. 
So I know this might be a little bit confusing since we don't have any parts here, but right now this file is ready to have two components inside of it, and this is called an assembly file. So let's do that. Let's start with my block S. So I'm going to activate block S on here. I'm going to click on it, and now I'm going to start building. We're going to go up here to create sketch. I'm going to click. I'm going to click on one of my drawing planes. And now I'm going to click on the two point rectangle. I'm going to hover over the origin right here and click. And what I like to do, I could click again and then dimension these. But if you notice um, that the, the height dimension right now wants, wants me to put something in. So I could click and then I could dimension it, but instead I'm going to let go of my mouse. I didn't click anything. And I'm just going to type 1.5. Now watch this, here's a little speedy trick. If I hit the tab key on my keyboard, it's going to accept that dimension and move to the bottom one. Then I'm gonna type 1.5 and I'm gonna hit enter, boom. And now my uh, square is completely dimensioned. I didn't have to do anything else, okay? So I don't have to dimension this line because if it's a square, this is gonna always equal this one. Same thing on this side. The parallel lines in a square are always going to equal each other. Okay. So I'm going to click on, now that I'm done drawing, finish sketch. Okay. My screen rotates and gives me this isometric view. If yours doesn't, go over to the view cube and click on the house. It's pretty good here. You see how it kind of zoomed in. Beautiful. Now we need to extrude this. We're going to click in the extrude button. I can just type. So notice right here, it's looking for a dimension. I can either drag this arrow or I'm just going to type 1.5. Okay. Now it looks like it's making a cube. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to click on the house. And now I have my first little uh, block, at least the shape. If I want to look around this thing, I can go up to my view cube and I can click and drag, and I've showed you this before, and kind of spin this around and look at all the different sides. I'm going to click on the house button to go back home. Now I know it's difficult on an iPad, but like I said, I'm doing it with you. The other thing that we're going to uh, work on as far as uh, manipulating these objects has to do with the toolboxes down here. So I just want to show you a couple. This button right here is called pan, it's a little hand. If we click it, it allows us to click and drag and move our object around the screen like this to change our view. When we're done with that, if I want to click on the zoom button, I started using my fingers to zoom in and zoom out and I didn't like it on the iPad, so I'm just going to use these buttons and be patient. For the zoom button, if I want to zoom in, I'm going to click and hold and move my mouse um, uh, this way, so that's up or down to zoom in and out. Okay, if we want to look at something. If we want to look specifically at a certain face, what we can do is we can click on this look at button, and if I click on here, this plane, it'll spin my object and orient it so we're looking directly perpendicular at this uh, face. Okay, so to go back to my isometric view, I'm going to click on the house button, and then life is good. So let's get going on the next part of this. So we want to put a letter on this screen right here, on this face. So to do that, in order to do any sort of thing where we need to extrude eventually, we always have to sketch. So I'm going to click on the sketch button. I'm going to click on this face because that's where I want my letter. And now in order to put a letter on there, I'm going to go up to the create uh, ribbon. We would call these this thing a ribbon menu. Click on the drop down, and there's a lot of different tools kind of hidden in here. And I'm going to click on the text tool. So the text tool is activated. In order to, so I'm going to kind of move this around so I don't have to see it. In order to draw my text, I'm going to click and drag a text box and let go. And I think it wants me to click. There we go. And now it wants me to input some text. So I'm going to put a capital S. 
I'm going to change the typeface to bold. You don't have to do this. This is completely unique to you. And I'm going to make the height maybe 1.5, maybe 1.3 inches. Yeah, that's fine. And you can change the font too if you want to. I'm going to keep it Arial just for the length of this video. And when I'm done, I'm going to hit OK. If I want to move this right now, I can click and drag and place it in the center of my screen. Okay, we're just going to eyeball it for now. And then we're going to click on Finish Sketch. We are going to click on Extrude. Sometimes it asks you what you want to extrude, so I'm going to just click on this letter. Okay, I may have to click again. I guess it was already selected. And I want this to cut, so I'm going to drag inwards. And you can see the operation right here says cut. And I'm going to cut this minus 0.05, or 50 thousandths, we would say, eventually. And I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the back. So I'm going to spin this around here, and I'm going to put the same letter on the back. So I need a new sketch. I need to hit Create, hit the Text Tool. I'm going to drag a text box. And remember, it wanted me to then click. I'm going to put S, make it bold, make it 1.3 inches, I believe. Hit OK. Put it in the middle. Hit Finish. OK. Click on Extrude. And I want to cut this minus. 0.05, 50 thousandths, and hit OK. Then when I'm done, I'm going to click on the house button. This looks good. I think my text is two different sizes. Don't do that. <laughs> but this block is done. OK, last thing I want to show you. How do we start and start working on this block T now? Well, watch this. If I, right now I can see, I can see both files because this eyeball is active or showing. But because this circle with the dot is on my block S, this is what I'm currently editing. If I want to edit block T, I'm going to click on this little side button here. Now block T is active, even though there's nothing there, and everything else on the screen gets grayed out. Okay. Now I can still see my block S, which is kind of troublesome because I don't want to just start drawing things over it. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do in order to hide this is just click on the eyeball next to block S, and it'll go away. And I'm going to do the same thing now for block T. I'm going to build. Create 2D sketch. Click on one of these planes. Uh, we're going to make a two-point rectangle. And remember, 1.5, tab, 1.5. Or you can use the dimension button if you don't want to do it that way. The dimension button is found under here, under the Create menu. I'm going to hit Finish, Extrude. 1.5, hit OK, and now I want to put my T on here. So we created a new sketch, click on text, and drag your text box, and click, type T. Um, let's make this 1.4. <laughs> I think that's too big. Let's go 1.3, hit OK, drag it in the center, hit finish, click on extrude, and we want to extrude this minus 0.05, and just make sure it says cut on here, and hit OK. I'm not going to do the back because I don't want to waste your time. So what's nice is this is active because we we're just building on it. If I click on this eyeball, now I can see the two objects, and they're kind of you know, intersecting one another, defying physics. So what I can do to kind of... Uh, uh, spread these out now is if I want to move them I'm going to activate my assembly file by coming up here and clicking this little activate button I gotta go slow on the iPad I know slow and now I should be able to click and hold and I can move them so I'm gonna zoom out so you can kinda see what I'm doing here and Oh, so this is good. If I want to move them now, I'm, my, my zoom in and zoom out thing is still active. So to get rid of it, I'm going to right click and hit cancel. And that will deactivate any tools. So then I can click and kind of move these shapes around. And we'll get more into this in a later video. So I want you to do this with all of your parts. Now, click on the house real quick. 
Be careful of which of these things are activated. You don't want to have your assembly activated if you're building. You want your component activated that you are building. So like, let's say I activate component T again, I can continue to keep drawing on this thing. And I'd probably even click on this button to see, you know, this shows me what I've done. And block T, I'm gonna minimize that. If I wanna make more blocks now, all I need to do is go up here, right click on baby blocks, click on new component, and it should allow me to make block E, click on OK, and now block E is activated. There's nothing there yet. I can hide all of those, and I can click on create sketch, and I can start building. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, oh, this is good. So if you start building and it asks, uh, it says some components have been moved. Always click capture position and then just keep going. Okay. All right. I hope everybody is going to be successful on this project. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on my other videos. Have a good day.